What is asset management? It's a balancing act between cost, risk, and performance. Let's look at it from a car ownership perspective. When you buy a car, you have to think about two categories of costs. The first category is the capital cost, the cost of purchasing the vehicle. This decision is your first opportunity to manage the balance between cost, risk, and performance. The second category is operating costs, the costs to keep it fit for function to get you safely from point A to B. Again, you are balancing cost, risk, and performance as you license, fuel, operate, and maintain your vehicle. It takes discipline to book regular inspections and repairs. And when there are competing priorities, it also takes family agreement to allocate funds for maintenance, major overhauls, and eventual replacement of the car. You and your family members are stakeholders in these decisions because there are always competing priorities for a family's time and money. The car is one among many assets that you have acquired to help fulfill your purpose in life. Perhaps the car and the roof of the house both need to be replaced in the same year, just as your child goes off to pursue a post-secondary education. These same dynamics are at play in any organization that relies on physical assets to achieve its purpose. Asset-intensive organizations have to be strategic and aligned to make decisions about which assets to invest in and how to manage them through a potentially long life cycle. Decision-making with respect to capital and operational expenditures is a vitally important part of asset management. And for an organization to succeed, these activities have to encompass many organizational levels and apply to all functions or departments. Answering questions like, how do the assets support our organization's goals? What do internal and community stakeholders need? What's the purpose of purchasing or maintaining these assets and what happens if we don't? What's the total cost of ownership over an asset's lifetime, not just the cost to acquire it? How is it performing? Is all of this being tracked to build data for improved decision-making? In 2014, a global consensus was reached on the definition of asset management as the coordinated activity of an organization to realize value from its assets. Notice the emphasis on realizing value from assets. How can assets help the organization deliver value while keeping risks at a tolerable level for the lowest cost possible? As we acquire, operate, and maintain assets, we must strive to ensure that they are capable of fulfilling their function without exposing the organization or the public to unacceptable risks and for the lowest possible cost. This is known as assurance, one of the four fundamentals of asset management. The bigger and more complex an organization gets, the more actions need to be standardized to ensure confidence and continuous improvement. Knowing this, a global ISO technical committee recognized the need for asset management systems. Creating a standardized, repeatable system of decision-making, processes, and practices that foster assurance requires alignment, another of the four fundamentals. Alignment drives coordinated efforts so that the organization's top objectives are translated into day-to-day data-driven decision-making about asset-enabled service delivery. The third fundamental of asset management is value. Considering whether the decisions and services are defined in terms of the value they provide for stakeholders and customers. Finally, leadership, the most important of all, is the fourth fundamental. Leadership fosters an environment of value-driven decision-making. Commitment from all managerial levels to create a collaborative culture is essential for successfully improving asset management within an organization. Now you know what asset management is, the next step is to learn about the positive impact improved asset management is having on regions and municipalities across Canada.